Hello, purpose of today's video lesson is to explore the concept of exponential growth in general terms. <clears throat> so here's the basis of it. Um, I've got this, this function, it's an exponential growth function, um, which talks about the speed of a chemical reaction that's dependent on the temperature. So um, I guess if it's exponential growth, uh, doubling every so often, that the warmer it gets, the faster the chemical reaction, which makes sense to me cold things, slow reactions, warm things, fast reactions. So anyway, that's what's going on here. But I understand exponential growth. There's an A value, which is a starting value. And then there's a B value, which is your growth factor. And then there's your variable exponent. I got my B value and my variable exponent. But here, I don't know what my starting value is. There's just this cryptic V with a little zero subscript. Well, this is in math what we call <coughs> um, an initial value. <coughs> Excuse me, an initial value. And as an initial value, we describe it as v naught. So in this case, the velocity at zero degrees, the initial condition, so to speak. So in the first case, it's asking for what is the speed at zero degrees Celsius. It's, I can't give you an answer. I don't know the exact speed of the reaction at zero degrees Celsius. But the information given tells me it's v naught. I don't know if I quite understand that quite yet, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the entire problem, except instead of using v naught, I'm going to replace it with 100 units. Unfortunately, I don't know what the rate of change, or the speed, I don't know how you measure the speed of a chemical reaction right now. I'll have to do some research. But right now, we're going to call it 100 units, and instead of saying v naught, I'm just going to say 100 units. So my equation now becomes 100 times 2 to the 1 20th t. Noticing here that 1 20th is just a, another form of 0 0.05. It's 5 out of 100, or 1 out of 20. So, that means that v, of tw v sub 20 is just going to be 200 units because 20 times 1 20th is 1 so we just double 100 in other words the reaction speed doubles from 0 degrees to 20 degrees Celsius now before I get to the uh, the rest of the question I'm going to explore how this looks on a graph I got this graph from my calculator <coughs> and transferred it onto paper, and I put down a couple of points. Now I noticed V of 50 is coming up, so I set my scale to go past 50, and I also um, indicated a point which is going to be relevant. I found where V of 50 is for later use. So here's what I have to come up with then. V of 50 is something I'm going to have to know, A, to get the graph looking good, and B, because I'm going to need to know it for part D. So to find V of 50, I just take 50 times 1 20th, which simplifies to 5 halves. So V of 50 in this case is 100 times 2 to the 5 halves power, which is 565.7 units of speed. Now, what they're interested in in part C and D, I'm assuming, is comparing how fast the reaction changes at cold temperatures compared to how fast the reaction changes at warmer temperatures. 50 degrees Celsius is pretty warm. So, that's what those questions are about. That's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to try to answer those questions. So here we have the graph, and in the first case it's asking for the percentage increase in speed at 20 degrees compared to the speed at 0 degrees. So, here's what I have. V sub 20 minus V naught over V naught. That may, may, may not make sense on the surface, because it looks all mathy. But when you see what V of 20 and V naught are, it's 200 uh, units minus 100 units over 100 units. In other words, there was an increase of 100 units, which is... 100% increase. 200 minus 100 is 100, which is a ratio of 1, or 100% increase. So what my graph shows is, in 20 minutes time, there was a 100% increase in the speed of the reaction. Doubled, basically. So, next question is asking something that appears to be different at first, unless you look at the, the nature of how I got this 100% increase. You see, this is V sub 50 minus V sub 20 over V sub 20. So they're asking here for the percent increase in temperature, or sorry, in reaction speed, as the temperature went from 20 degrees to 50 degrees. So to calculate it, all I'm going to do is take V sub 50, which I found as 100 times 2 to the 5 halves power, remember, on the previous page. I left it in that form, and you'll see why in just a minute. But here's 2 times 100, which is what we found over here. That's V sub 20, and then this is V sub 20 again. This ratio will tell me the rate of increase over that 30 degree ratio, or span of time. So, what I did was, I saw 100 here, and I saw 100 here, and I factored it out. 
the distributive property. Notice if I redistribute it, I'll get back where I was before. Now that that 100 is factored out, I can divide and multiply in any order. So I'm going to choose to divide out the 100s, and this is what I'm left with which, after going to a calculator, turns out to be 1.828. Or in other words, there's a 182% increase, almost three times as much when the temperature went from 20 degrees to 50 degrees. 182.8% increase. Now, <clears throat> that's what happens if the initial speed of the reaction is 100 degrees, or sorry, 100 units. But what if I said the initial condition was not 100 units, but 50 units. Well, that would mean my equation changes from 100 times 2 to 50 times 2 to the 1 20th times t. The 100 becomes 50, which means at v, of v sub 20 we have 100 units, which is exactly the same result that I had before, and that is it's double. So whether I start with 50 or whether I start with 100, it still takes 20 minutes time for the reaction to double. Or sorry, 20 degrees, I apologize. So what this means is, it seems to me that it doesn't really matter what the initial condition is. What's important about this function is the rate. And so the rate is what's going to be the same, doesn't matter what I start with. So, uh, exploring this a little bit further, I changed 100 to back to 50. Instead of 0, 100, I chose 0, 50. Notice, by the way, I have the exact same graph as I did before. All I did right here is change the scale. This used to be 200, 400, and so on. I just took half of everything, and that's my new scale. So now instead of being 0, 100 right here, it's 0, 50. Exact same, exact same behavior, exponential growth. To get V of 50, I just put in 50 times 2, 1 20th times 50 power, <laughs> which ends up being literally half. So I started with half as much, and I end up with half as much as I did before. So everything is compressed by a factor of 2. So, doing the same thing that I did before, trying to find the percentage increase in speed from 20 compared to 0, is simply a matter of subtracting V of 20 minus V sub 0 over V sub 0, which is 50 over 50, or 1, or in other words, 100% increase. So even though I started with a slower reaction speed than I did before, I still have the same 100% increase in temperature over the first 20 degrees. Working the same calculations as before, V sub 50 minus V sub 20, once again notice that V sub 50 is this calculation right here, V sub 20 is this calculation right here, the same as I had before except instead of hundreds, these are all 50s. Factor out the 50, just like I factored out the 100 before. Divided out the 50s, just like I divided out the 100s before. And lo, I ended up with the exact same ratio as I did before. So it didn't matter how much I started with, I still have the same um, percent increase in reaction speed from 20 degrees to 50 degrees as I did before. This is where we get into algebraic thinking and mathematical reasoning. You see, it doesn't matter whether I choose 100 units or whether I choose v naught units. Not 100, not 50, V naught. I don't know how much, but it doesn't really matter. We'll find out. <clears throat> v sub 20 is not going to be 100 times whatever. It's going to be 50. No, not 50. It's going to be V naught times 2 to the 1 20th times 20, which is 2 V naught. In other words, the reaction speed will double from 0 to 20 degrees Celsius, just like it did before. This is how we express it. It doesn't matter how much I start with, it'll still take 20 degrees to double my reaction speed. Continuing on with this vein, when I make my graph and my scale, instead of scaling the y values, like with hundreds or two hundreds, I can show 2 v naught, 4 v naught, 6 v naught, and so forth. All multiples of my initial condition. However much that is, doesn't matter. V sub 50 is V naught times 2 to the 2 fifths power, which turns out to be about 5.657 V naught. Multiply that together, whatever you start with, times that particular number, and you will have your reaction speed at 50 degrees. It's like a formula, like a recipe. Same as before then, I can calculate my uh, percentage increase from 0 to 20. V sub 20 minus V sub 0 over V sub 0. Only this time, instead of numbers, I have this. If you notice, there's two V sub V naughts less one V naught 
2x minus 1x is just 1x, or 2v0 minus 1v0 is v0. It gives me v0 over v0, which is 1, which is still 100%. doesn't matter what I start with, it's still going to have the same increase. Exact same calculations happen as before, except instead of 50s or 100s, I put v naughts in here. I factor out the v naughts. I still get the same 182.8% increase. So I hope this clarifies things a little bit more. It's a big idea here. It's a huge idea because what it does is it kind of points out the value of mathematics to make generalizations. We don't have to know certain things and able to be able to reveal certain truths especially when the behaviors are so easily definable. So if we know we have exponential growth, then we don't need to know what we start with. We can still perceive the same rates of change depending on not the A value, but either the B value or the combination of the B value and the coefficient on the variable. Again, I hope this is helpful. Have a good day.